Have you heard of No Neutral November? It's a fun Twitter trend where, during November, fighting game players post their favourite moves that skip neutral, like Bardock's Lariat. That was a popular one. Who needs to work to find a hit when you can just press your neutral skip button and immediately start your pressure? I saw that a friend posted Colleen's V-Trigger. Great pick, I remember her terror. I saw Gordo's Grim Reaper, that's a really strong example. My current favourite is definitely Roa's Thunderclap. Tons of fun. For me. Someone posted Kizame in Ultimate Ninja 2 and 3. I don't know what's going on there, but now that I think about it, I do know a character that was skipping neutral in an arena fighter as well. Smash players participate in the trend too. However, something is weird about their selections, because I've noticed that none of the moves these players are posting actually skip neutral. Like, here are some of the Smash posts. From Esam, Pikachu's neutral B. Definitely a strong tool, but you absolutely still need to play neutral. Min Min's Ram Ram. Okay, she's voided out Dalsim. Ridiculously strong neutral game, for sure, but she isn't skipping neutral here. Uh, I see Cloud back air, Halutena back air, Chrome buttons. I mean, these are just strong, disjointed tools, but they definitely don't skip neutral for you. Fox and Sheik's entire existence? Once again, crazy good neutral, but they aren't skipping it. Richter's F tilt? Okay. I'm starting to think that Smash players have a different definition of skipping neutral. So what's going on? Street Fighter, Smash Brothers, Guilty Gear, Tekken, they're all variations of the same thing, a fighting game. Of course, fighting game fans know that there are several important differences between each and every game, but from the outside looking in, Smash Brothers, Guilty Gear, these are just slightly different breeds of the same thing, like a husky and a Labrador. What's the fuss? A dog is a dog. That was easily the most ignorant statement I have ever allowed onto this channel, and I'm sure dog owners worldwide would cringe upon hearing it in a way not too dissimilar to when fighting game players hear that Street Fighter is just like Smash Bros. But I don't blame them, because really, despite the obvious differences, most fighting games have a lot in common. There's the typical stuff, player versus player from a third person view, normals, specials, guarding and grabbing, but they even share advanced fighting game concepts. Whiff punishment, stage control, option selects, hit confirms, frame advantage, neutral, archetypes, anti-airs, fireballs, combos, scaling, empty jumps, guard cancels, guard crushing, mix-ups, what else can I pluck from this lustrous glossary? Ah, cross-ups. Attacking your opponent immediately after changing which horizontal side you're facing, usually by jumping over them. Because blocking requires holding the direction away from your opponent in most fighting games, cross-up attacks will force players to quickly switch their blocking direction from left to right or vice versa, or else they will get hit. This is true, but that's not what a cross-up is over in Smash Bros. Over there, a cross-up just means a move that ends with you on the other side of the opponent. Just keep in mind that dash attack is generally not safe against shield. It can cross up at close range against a few slim characters, but it can still be punished if they predict it. Which technically means that if we followed Smash's usage of the term, this would be considered a cross-up. But of course, Smash uses a block button, so naturally the meaning would change slightly. Uh, what about... Mmm, frame traps. Two attacks back to back that leave a very small gap between them. The gap will be shorter than the defender's fastest attack, which means if they try to attack with a normal, they will get counter hit. Oh wow, that's a super clean description. I would have simply said that a frame trap is when you leave a gap big enough that your block string isn't true and your opponent can mash, but the gap is also so small that they'll be punished if they do mash. I guess that's the same thing though. But um, if I double check this definition with a friend who exclusively plays Smash... What is a frame trap? A frame trap is when an opponent can air dodge to escape a combo, but you can cover that escape option with another move. So either they don't air dodge and they get hit, or they air dodge and they get hit. It sure is! Thank you for the reconfirmation! I take it something unique to platform fighters? Nope! In Smash, Frame trap, as well, has a completely different meaning, even though the traditional fighter definition of a frame trap is still possible within Smash. 
Clearly, there are some differences between traditional fighters and platform fighters worth talking about, but there's just so many elements that we could pick apart. We could talk about having a wall for a corner versus an offstage, we could talk about the effects of a life bar versus a percentage, or we could even talk about the false assumption that interactive combo somehow makes for a better quality fighting game, but that's going to have to wait. We only have so much time, so for this video, all I want to focus on is how to hit someone, or more clearly, the process behind finding and landing your hits, doing so in a traditional fighter versus doing so in a platform fighter. And by platform fighter, I mean Smash Ultimate, like I've barely played the others and I don't really want to, sorry. There's a good chance that the things I say about Smash Ultimate may apply to other platform fighters, but be aware of my bias. On the other hand, traditional fighter is also a rather nebulous term. Every time I say it, I could mean anything from Street Fighter to Tekken to Guilty Gear to Sailor Moon. Now that's real tradition. But I am entering this comparison with games like King of Fighters and Guilty Gear as my representatives for traditional fighter, mainly because they feel the closest to Smash, so it just feels natural for comparison but I'm aiming for what I say to apply to most traditional fighters as well. But that's enough prefacing, let's put the spotlight on my ex, Chip Zanuff, and put ourselves in his shoes, I mean sandals. Chip is a rushdown character with blistering speed. He's not always required to be the aggressor, but in this scenario, that is the role we'll play. <coughs> we want to land a meaningful hit, and with Chip's moveset, that's only possible if we manage to get over there, our goalpost. This Leo player knows this as much as the Chip does, and he's prepared to stop Chip from succeeding. We have all been in Chip's position before. How do we get there? Obviously, we pick our opportunities to carefully work our way in. But how far in, and what buttons do we press? Out of Chip's arsenal, here are some of the buttons that would be floating around in your mind during these moments. 5k, 2k, jump H, far slash, 2D, and jump D. The button that you press really depends on your goal. If you just want something to connect, your best buttons in neutral would be your pokes, far slash, uh, 2D, jump D. But most of the time, that's not what we're actually aiming for. Instead, we want to land these buttons. They don't have the best range, but we want them to connect because they have greater reward. Unlike the pokes, they can be followed up in several ways, making them great to establish pressure or perform a damaging combo, two things you typically won't get out of your pokes. The best part about successfully landing these moves is that it really doesn't matter if the opponent blocks them or not. As long as your hitbox connects with their hurtbox, you're running your game. At best, you're doing damage, and at worst, the opponent hopefully squanders under your oppressive block strings. I'd like to emphasize that in a traditional fighter, blocking is a very bad position to be in, and it's often just a precursor to getting hit. Hence, we do all we can to avoid it. Ideally, we maneuver in ways that allow us to completely avoid the opponent's buttons, but when you're unable to outrun a speed demon like Chip, we have no choice but to directly counter their approach. And that is what our Leo must do. In round start once, middle round to end round, the DPs are going down. Yes, that's real good. Oh, but there we go, like we say. I know trying to throw out these buttons to preemptively stop the run up there for being one hit hit confirm. Slow no down. Spin, He's able to get the butt able to get the meter out of him. Gonna go for the bug. Oh. Nice back dash. Oh, oh my god! And that is a very simple look into the process behind landing a hit in a traditional fighter. Now, if we turn the page over to Smash, we get a completely different experience. This is Fox versus Cloud. Like Chip, Fox is yet another rushdown character with blistering speed. He also wants to get into a closer range and land a meaningful hit, but he'll have to make it past Buster Sword, Cloud's big disjointed weapon that occupies the space around him. Right, so we could repeat the process of going over what buttons Fox aims to press, but I'd rather just play the clip and let this excellent display of aggression speak for itself. Okay, so he ran into Cloud's preferred range, but he parried the forward air beautifully and gets to take his turn. And for his turn, he... 
empty jumps, and then he presses shield. Okay, maybe this clip is a little too unordinary to use, so let's look at a different one. Okay, so he pressures Spargo's shield with neutral air. This is Fox's safest aerial, so it's a common pressure tool to see used. He hasn't quite gotten the hit yet though, so once he lands, what does he do? Spot dodge, then dash away? Okay, he didn't manage to get the hit here, let's just find another clip. There we go, a simpler interaction! Fox successfully gets close to Cloud, and then he holds the shield button, and then he does a full hop, and attacks the air. The same air that Cloud jumped right into and suffered a hit from. A very simple way of getting a meaningful hit. If you're solely a traditional fighting game player, this is a pretty what the fuck approach to aggression. Welcome to Smash, because the lines are constantly blurred. Landing a hit requires an entirely different approach because shielding is a drastically different mechanic to blocking. Mainly, it's ridiculously stronger thanks to a mechanic called out of shield. Put simply, after you put your shield up in Smash, dropping the shield comes with some recovery frames where you're vulnerable. However, with out of shield moves, you're able to skip the recovery portion of dropping shield and immediately cancel your shield into a specific set of moves. Think of it like a guard cancel, except it's free, faster, and does real threatening damage. Some characters come with a good set of out of shield options while others don't, but for the majority of the cast, it's a mechanic that you always have to be on the lookout for. Tapping someone's shield always poses a risk, and because of this threat, players not only need to enter their preferred range, but they also need to figure out how they're actually going to hit the opponent without the situation instantly being reversed on them for merely breathing on a shield. And this is at the core of why throwing out buttons and fishing for hits is such a different game in Smash compared to traditional fighters. Players pressure their opponents with safe buttons that have little lag so they can at least be safe if the opponent shields it. Or, they attempt to space their buttons well enough to be outside of the punish range. But that's just shield pressure. Sometimes it's necessary to play riskier, doing things like empty jumps to bait people into taking an action out of shield and then punishing them for it. Or, well, grabbing the shield, I guess? The threat of out of shield is why you see this fox entering what looks like the ideal range for the character, and then all of a sudden, it's defensive options galore. This is actually a pretty common scenario in Smash, because that's just how the game works. Finding a hit isn't just about overcoming them in neutral, it's also about seeking out their defensive habits and baiting them into exposing themselves to an attack. That's definitely an extra step that I don't have to go through when I play my traditional fighters. As I said before, once you're in, you're in, regardless of whether they manage to block or not. If they're blocking, the moves we often land are ones that now move us on to step 2, offense and defense. The mix-up game full of stagger pressure, high lows, resets, all that fun stuff. Whereas in Smash, seeing the enemy shield could be rather frightening. <laughs> Finding any hit is a blurry endeavor, and it's never really clear who is in a good position and who is in a bad one until you actually see that hit successfully connect. Seeing Smash Ultimate appear in No Neutral November will always be weird because nobody skips neutral in that game. I don't see how they could without instantly breaking the game, because the steps to landing that hit in Smash is fundamentally different. In a traditional fighter, we very frequently settle for at least connecting with our opponents, even if they're blocking our attack. That's good for the aggressor, neutral is over, it's on to the pressure game. In these games, some characters come with obnoxious neutral tools that often allow them to forego the entire process of cleverly working your way in, and instead, they skip straight to the phase where the opponent is blocking and the game continues from there. This just can't exist in Smash when you have mechanics like Out of Shield. You rarely even want to settle for them shielding your buttons in neutral. Smash characters do come with tools reminiscent of neutral skips in a traditional fighter, but 
blockstrings don't exist, and getting in your opponent's face like that would probably just get you killed. At best, the neutral skip tools of Smash could only be ones that keep someone safe enough to pick a defensive option after the opponent shields. And that isn't really skipping neutral if you're the one that ends up having to play defense, the opposite of what happens in a traditional fighter. With all that said, I have been getting dangerously close to feeding into Smash propaganda. Before I end this video, I think it's extremely important for me to be clear where I stand and curb any false interpretations that people might be getting about the neutral game of Smash Ultimate. There is a strong belief among several Smash players that neutral is more important in their game than it is in most traditional fighters. And there are several things fueling that belief. Smash has very loose movement options, typically less punishing combos so there's more time spent moving all over the place, the presence of platforms on stages, you know, it's easy to see all these things and, on the surface, assume that good neutral is an even more central part of your play in Smash than it is in a traditional fighter. When I was merely a spectator of Smash, I naively bought into that very belief. However, now that I've played Smash Ultimate, I can confidently tell you that that isn't true. <laughs> Look, I'm going to keep this short because this part is super subjective and it pretty much only applies to Smash Ultimate and not other platform fighters, but I do not think a game where you can reap so much benefit from sitting in your shield is one where neutral is the most important. Watch traditional fighters and see how much effort players constantly put into making sure they can evade their opponent's attacks. Of course, this effort exists in Smash 2, but you can easily find several moments where actual movement is neglected in favour of sitting in your shield and giving your opponent trouble through that alone. This is the fighting game where you can go anywhere and everywhere. Why is it also the one that rewards you for not moving out of the way? It's made worse by how difficult it is to get a whiff punish in Smash Ultimate. Whiff punishment is such a huge part of neutral in so many fighting games. It's never easy to do perfectly, but you don't have to be perfect. In a traditional fighter, when you're too slow to get the punish and they manage to block, you'll at least either be in an advantageous position or simply continue playing neutral. But in Smash, being too slow on a whiff punish may actually get you killed if the opponent is able to shield which is a brutal consequence in a game where most moves are actually incredibly safe on whiff. Even at the top level, you'll frequently see failed whiff punishes. When everything is so safe, it's so encouraging to just throw some crap out there constantly, as long as you have just that one frame you need to be able to just shield afterwards. Who cares if you almost got whiff punished? You probably turned it into a good thing. But, you know, I'm not saying that Smash Neutral is worse. I am, but there are too many perspectives to look at this from. It's hard to undersell the skill it takes in Smash to open someone up when it genuinely does take that extra effort to read someone's defensive habits and still somehow overcome their shield. However, staying truly on top of your movement in a traditional fighter when you have no leniency to even block is a completely different skill set in itself. These things are hard to compare. All I know are these three truths. 1. Never listen to a Smash player boast about neutral in their game. 2. King of Fighters is the only fighting game with good neutral anyway. 3. Smash is easily the hardest fighting game to find a hit in. It's because to actually hit someone, I have to do all of this. Wow.